Hey guys, in today's video, we're going over the snapshot mode on the Helix and the HX Stomp units. This is, in my opinion, the best way to use your Helix or your HX Stomp in most situations. Everyone is different, but I think for most people, this is the most beneficial way to run your unit. This applies to the HX Stomp, the Helix, and I believe even the Pod series, but I'm going to demo this specifically on the HX Stomp because it's the most valuable because you only get three buttons. So first of all, who is snapshot mode not for? And you can turn off this video. If you have one tone that you need, you're not gonna ever really change it and you just need to turn on like a delay on this one and a reverb on this one and a chorus on this one and you're good with that then go ahead and shut off the video and thanks for watching but if you're tired of pedal dancing if you don't want to have to step on pedals and especially on the hx stomp where you don't have very many buttons to control all of your changes snapshot mode will save different settings of every single block that you have here. So I'm just going to show you what I did for this one just for this demo. And this is usually how I use snapshot mode. This is a clean, a very clean. This is a little bit more overdrive. And then this one is a lot of them. So it's just one of the sets that I use. So if I go to this one, you have a very similar thing. More overdrive, less, and then even less overdrive all in one. However, you can also do something crazy like go from this to this, to that, three different tones in this kind of weird reverb one. So in this one, let me go back to the one that I'm demoing this with. So in snapshot mode, you can change any of the parameters that you want in here. So let me just show you how to do this really quick. So first to get to snapshot mode, you push your page button over here to see, go through different modes. So you have, you can scroll up through your presets. You can change your banks. This is snapshot mode or you can assign buttons to each of these. So this is the snapshot mode, the one that says one, two, and three. So what you do in here is if you want to change something, so I'm using the Soldano amp. This is kind of my, my heavy distortion channel. Most people need three tones for the most part, a clean-ish, rhythm-ish, and then a lead channel. This gives you that option in order to do this. I actually, at the end of the video, I'm gonna show you how I do this with a little extra pedal that I do for the boost. So I'm just personally gonna show you how to do three different types of tones and how to get those with snapshot mode. I'm gonna darken my camera just a little bit so you can see that better. I know you can't really see what's going on over here, but hopefully you can see the screen better. So what I can do is if you watch, actually, let me go to here, so the drive, on this channel, when it's on button three, it's at 7.3, now it's at 2.8, and now it's at, it should be off actually for the clean channel. Then we step on this one, it moves it up to 2.8. This one moves it up to 7.3, cause they got one more drive. You also notice the bass change. In this one it's 6.6. This one's 6.4, which was probably just an accident. And this one, it drops to 3.1 because it actually was too much bass for the distortion. Because for me, I have to scoop some of that out because the bass is usually going to fill in that part. That's not the only thing that I change. You can also see on my plate reverb that I have here, I don't have a whole lot on it. But when it's on the clean channel, it's at 30 because I like a little more reverb. And then on this one, it's a little bit less. And this one, again, by 2%, that's not going to change much. But I want more reverb on my clean channel, less reverb on my distortion channel. I'll show you just another patch. Even with the individual buttons, you can change... You can turn on and off stuff. So do you see how my gain and my, this is my gain right here. And then this is my distortion right here. When I'm on this one, my distortion is off and my gain is on. When I switch here, it switches those. This one is now on, the distortion is on and the gain is off. Does that make sense? So it's a way to keep from pedal dancing. It's just a very efficient way to do that. So how do you set these up? So what you do, so let's just, re, let's just reset this just for the sake of the video. I'm gonna set, a gain in here again. So as you can see, when I cycle through the buttons, gain isn't changing, nothing changes. It turns on and off, as you can see, but the gain doesn't change. So the way to do that is you take the button, let me brighten it just for a minute so you can see this. You push in on the knob and then turn. See how it turned white? It changes the color. You might not be able to see that on the camera, but you'll see it for sure on here. So when you push in, and twist, you're gonna see it change colors slightly. That means that it will remember what settings you have on each specific snapshot. So see how I change back here? Now it's at negative one. Now the problem is I didn't save it. So if I push in and twist, again, I'm trying to find the, the right settings so you can see the screen and what I'm doing. You push in and twist the knob and it changes. So now I'm gonna save this 
you push both of these two buttons right here, save it. And now if I go back, see how on this button, it's at negative 1.1. Here it's at plus 2.3. And here it's on and at negative 0.1. Does that make sense? So again, you can do this with whatever you want. So let's say on this button right here, I want to turn the wow flutter of my delay all the way up. Just a really crazy sounding one. And then save that. And then say on this same preset, I want to do a boost or I want to cut my 2K. For some reason, whatever reason I want to do that. And then again, you would save it. That's the tricky part. You have to remember, always save it so that it remembers that. And now, if you look, here, 2K is boosted by 2.2, and now it's cut by 3.2. Does that make sense? So again, go crazy with it. Sometimes I'll have like this, like a bass, and then to like a tremolo, and then just kind of like a clean sound with a lot of reverb. Or you can set it, or here's another one where I just have a clean and then a bass for like looping and stuff and then clean with with delay so clean with a lot of reverb clean with a lot of delay and a different type of reverb and then with bass with no reverb and no delay make sense so again go crazy with it however you want to do that now there is something so a lot of like i said like i mentioned oftentimes you're going to have clean rhythm and lead i have clean like half clean, half rhythm, and then kind of a distortion is usually my setup. It just depends, you know, like sometimes when I'm looping, I do a bass thing. This is the TT2 by Mission Engineering. It's a great tiny little pedal, fits in my hand, it's super tiny, and just goes into your expression input in the top up here. The way that I actually have this set, let me go back to this one, this one that I actually use, is that the second button right here is my tuner, because I always want access to my tuner, which is also the tap tempo. This one is my boost. So here's regular, here's a boost. And it also actually turns on the delay a little bit more, because I want more delay. Let me show you. So my delay, you can see the feedback, it goes up. So the boost goes up, and the feedback, and the mix goes up when I push this. Where I have my boost is here at the end, see the level? It increases by five, which is a pretty big boost. But on any channel, I get a lead channel. Here's my clean, here's my clean lead if I ever need that. So that's actually really helpful in order to get, because I still like to have my access to my tuner and my tap tempo, but this is now my lead. And the way that I do that is you go to when you're on the effect that you want tap that double tap these bottom two the two pages controller assign and i'm going to set the feedback parameter to foot switch four which is this one so you don't get four you don't get like five snapshots with this this is just two extra buttons so this way you can use three snapshots, and then you can have two buttons. So like I said, this is my boost, so it gives it a little bit of a boost, and it increases my feedback on my delay. So it's on feedback. Let's just set it to where it was here. I'll just go through it. You set it to foot switch four, because this would be foot switch one, two, three. Now this is four and five with this attached. Scroll over. The minimum value when it's not pressed is set nine or something like that. And then what do I want it to be when I do my boost? Set it to 50. That's quite a bit, but... And then you could save it. I'm not going to save it since I used this patch. <laughs> but does that make sense? So this is actually a really nice feature because that way you still have access to two buttons in here somewhere. But then these are your three snapshots. Again, like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're just a guy who has one tone, you need to turn on like three effects and they don't really change anything else, snapshot mode isn't really for you. But just being able to change the EQ when you go to your boost or something like that, that's really helpful as well. So I hope that helped you guys out. I started in just normal mode and snapshot mode really just changed the world for me. I really love snapshot mode. When I do this on my full helix, I actually have snapshots on the bottom and then individual pedals on the top row. That's just how I do it. Might be good for you. It might not. Everybody's a little bit different, but hopefully this at least just gave you an idea of what other ways 
you can use your Helix unit. This is my favorite way to do it for sure. So I hope that helped you guys out. Um, just a few more things. If you noticed, I'm not actually using the standard power for the HX Stomp. I did another video on it. This is the Rip Cord by MyVolts, and you can actually power it by like a portable phone charger, which is pretty crazy. So um, check out that video if you're interested. I also did a video of just five just general overall tips and tricks for the HX Stomp. Don't forget to check that out as well. Don't forget to like and subscribe, especially if you found this video helpful. Even if you don't feel like subscribing, just hitting a like really helps out the channel. Um, if you want more tech tips like this, don't forget to subscribe, uh, hit the bell icon. Links are in the description down below for anything, as well as where to purchase some of these items if you found them useful. So yeah, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.